Vernier calipers are the most misunderstood calipers out there. Additionally, there are many considerations when using calipers for proper use. And in this video, we'll cover the Vernier scale, best practices, usage, as well as the chart on the back of the calipers. This will expand your capabilities and precision, making your work finer and of higher fidelity. Calipers can be found in many forms, though the most common are vernier calipers and digital calipers. Vernier calipers are ones with a scale on the sliding part of the caliper named after Pierre Vernier. And contrary to reason and popular belief, vernier calipers are nearly as accurate as digital calipers. Anywhere from 0.02 to 0.05 millimeters in accuracy, which is very, very accurate. Under a microscope at 40 times magnification, we could hardly make out that space. So yes, vernier calipers are extremely accurate, though they require a little bit of extra work to read. At first glance, this scale on the calipers may just seem like another ruler or way to measure outwards, though that of course doesn't make sense once we take a closer look. If we line up the 0 with a 2 for example, the lines won't coincide at any point throughout the centimeter scale or inch scale, and this is intentional and how the scale works to begin with. This skill works by looking for the line that best matches to the line on the centimeter scale, and that will tell you your decimal points on millimeters. So let's look at some examples to understand how this works. If we're sitting at exactly two millimeters, only the first and last line should align best, meaning that we have no millimeter decimal points, so it is exactly two millimeters. However, let's move forward just a bit. We can guess at this and say that this is around 2.3 millimeters, as it looks to be about one third past two millimeters. But let's use our vernier scale to get a vastly more precise number. What we're looking for is which line best aligns to the top line. Now, you may need to get some glasses out and take a good look, but we can see that around 35 to 45, the lines best align. At this point, we can pick the best line that fits, telling us that this measurement is 2.4 millimeters. We can somewhat confirm this by checking with our digital calipers and we get 2.9 millimeters. This is insanely accurate. The human eye could only resolve up to 0.1 millimeters. So this precision is imperceivable to the human eye. And this is how vernier calipers are extremely accurate, with its benefits being no batteries and a thinner package overall. Moving on, digital calipers are much easier to use with a screen that displays the values. And there's not much to say about these, though there is much to say about properly using them. These calipers have four main methods of measuring. They have the outer, inner, depth, and step, also known as rebound measurement. Outer measurements are taken with the largest jaws on the calipers, closing the jaws flush to the desired measurement. However, it is important to keep in mind to stay as close to the caliper as possible without falling into the gap for the most accurate measurement. This is because the calipers can have some minor play that can create an angle in the jaw the farther it gets from the main shaft. It's also important to ensure that the jaws are square to whatever you're measuring, as any angle will throw off the accuracy. And in many cases, there can be an angle that is small enough to be undetectable. To ensure you're square on something, put some tension on the calipers and slightly rock the tool back and forth when you're measuring. If you're slightly off, you'll feel the calipers settle into place. The tips of the large jaws are also cut down to a point to fit in crevices and measure inside smaller spaces whenever necessary. Next we have our inner measurement tool. These are used to measure in between spaces, and again, when measuring, keep as close to the device as possible for the most accurate measurement. When measuring circular spaces, place some tension on the calipers and rock them back and forth to ensure you're sitting at the widest point of the circle. Next, we have a depth measurement tool. Measuring the depth of something is done with the rod that extends from the end of the calipers. This is set on the edge and the rod is extended into the crevice to measure depth. Again, ensure the calipers are sitting as flush as possible. The notch on the rod is also an important thing to keep in mind. When measuring a hole that is square at the end, you face the cutout towards the wall. This is to avoid measuring any slight bevel that the hole might have. 
However, if the hole is conical, as with a drill bit would leave, then the cutout faces away from the wall, ensuring you measure to the top of that cone. Next, we have step measurements, which are done with the front part of the tool. And this is the least known measuring capability of a caliper. As the name suggests, it measures things that have the shape of a step. Push the calipers open a little bit and set the step on what you want to measure. Then, holding the shaft, push down to the desired measurement. Again, ensure the calipers are as flush and straight as possible with the surface. And this is how you measure steps. On the back of most calipers, you'll also have some charts. You'll often encounter the CE mark, which this means that the tool conforms to all European regulations that apply to it. In this case, the European Instruments Directive. And this, to a certain extent, is an indicator of quality. However, an important thing that I've recently become aware of is that this emblem is not the same as this emblem. This emblem means China export and is designed to lead people to believe that it conforms to regulation, though it does not. To distinguish between the emblems, you need to look at the spacing between them. The European conformity emblem has more space in between the letters, while the China export emblem is closer together. If you imagine the C completing a circle, it should barely intersect with the letter E. If it looks like it would surpass it, then it's a China export emblem. Next, let's look at the charts. The first chart, in this case, is a metric ISO, meaning International Organization for Standardization Metric Thread Chart. This chart gives us some important dimensions for threads and screws. The first line is the major diameter, which is the outer diameter. The second value gives us the thread pitch, or in other words, how far the apex of one thread is from the next. Then we have minor diameter, which is the diameter of its deepest part. Finally, drill is which drill size bit should be used to drill a hole for this size screw. Then we also have the British standard width work chart. This is also used for bolts and screws with the first value being the major diameter or outer and the second value being the thread density or in other words, how many threads per inch. Then we have the minor diameter, which is the diameter of the inner part of the threads. And finally, the tap size or drill bit size. And that is how to properly use calipers. If you're interested in buying anything in this video, like the calipers, there's links down below. These links support the channel and help us continue to make content.